I command you. Why should we listen to you? Yeah. Because I am God. So you play God. Yes. There was there was a thing on that on that cape though that was not safe for television. I don't oh really? Think. But great. Well, I'm, go I'm... back, uh, rewind, and pause, kids. <laughs> I think we would have got away with it, Bowen. Damn. Oh, sorry, standards and practices. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? It was hard finding a clip from Dick's The Musical. I know. I'm sure. <laughs> We didn't want to have you on here and show a two and a half second clip. Sure, you couldn't have called it. I, I can't. I can't even come up with an alternative to Dick's <laughs> musical that is safe for television. This was a, a a UCB show that you were yeah. involved with back in 2014. I was not involved. I was just like a lowly, lowly audience <laughs> member. <laughs> 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 I was, but I saw it like multiple times, and it was this was like back in 2014, 2015, and um, it was Josh Sharp and Aaron Jackson who were in the movie who play these twin brothers. It's um, a gay parent trap, basically. Uh, that's a musical, and um, but then they they did the show like once a month, and then it became this like meeting ground and this touch point for a lot of queer comedians in the city. Like we would who had never really talked to each other before that, who didn't hang out, and it was it was great. We all like went out to they said we're doing a talk back at a bar around the corner. It was and it was just an excuse for us to like just talk and hang out. That's so nice. So I'm assuming when they reached out and said, Bowen, we'd like you to play God, it was a quick yes. Quick yes. And I'm really honored. It's it's like what, me, Morgan Freeman, Alanis Morissette, and George Burns? Yeah. Like, crazy... Those are those are the four gods. <laughs> those are the that's the Mount Rushmore of God. <laughs> We're, we're, we're like the Sex and the City girls of God. Do you, how, I mean, I know you uh, always do a lot of research about a character before you play it. What, what did you find that drew you to God? Well, I, I, I read the entire Bible cover to cover <laughs> and uh, in Aramaic. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I so, so God in this movie is this like really petulant sort of gay entity and it, it got me thinking like my way in was like god is god is a kind of a messy queen you yeah. know <laughs> like he's so dramatic floods the world <laughs> makes it rain frogs that's campy um <laughs> Like, you know, the, the whole book of Job is him, like, playing the Sims on this one guy. Like, <laughs> you know? So, so I, I, feel, I feel like that is, this is a very, like, it's a new portrayal of God, but it's like, it's the God the way we understand God. Yes, and, and that, that we haven't been able to admit that's what God has been telling us. Exactly. And now you're finally like, let's just own it. And let's just own it. Everyone's free to just call God a messy queen. <laughs> Uh, this is a great uh, cast, uh, Nathan Lane, yes. uh, Megan Mullally's in uh -huh. it. But uh -huh. the, the really all anybody who's seen the movie is talking about is, uh, is the Sewer Boys. The Sewer Boys. So the Sewer Boys are these two characters that uh, belong to Nathan <laughs> Lane in the film. Yep, that's they're, right. Uh, they're like just prosthetic uh, dudes. Yes, they're, they're real puppets. They're yeah. prosthetic Here's dudes. Here's a good sense of their actual size. That's right. Yeah. So that, that, that's, that's them with us on the red carpet. Um, I, someone made me hold one of them on the red carpet, and I wasn't real. I thought they were really adorable, really cute, but then when I touched them, the, the, whoever made them made them out of like real skin and bone, it seems <laughs> like. <laughs> I was like, this is vile. But I, I'm curious, you've lived in New York a long time. Do you, uh, do you believe that there is like a, a, a species, a lateral species of like, Sewer people, like mole people. What do you think? A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. There has to be. And I think they're not that upset about it. No. Yeah. Great real estate. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're great. There's a, like they are, absolutely they have so much space. Uh huh. And they're like it's by, by the train. It's by the train. <laughs> Talking about God, you actually as a kid wanted uh, wanted to make a deal with the devil. Yes. I think at, at so I, I guess I admitted this on 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 a press thing for this movie. Um, I, someone unlocked a memory for me. They said, "Did you ever sell? Have you ever sold your soul to the devil?" I said, "Wait a minute, I did." <laughs> when I was <laughs> when I was like 11 years old, there was an episode of The Simpsons that was on. It's called Bart Sells His Soul, season seven, episode four, and <laughs> written by Greg Daniels, who we all yep, know and love the from office. The Office. Um, and Bart basically sells his soul to Millhouse, and then I think by the end of the episodes, he like you know asks Satan to, to give it back. And I was I watched that in my basement, being like, you can do that. 
great. <laughs> So you did not uh, watch the episode as a cautionary tale? No, yeah. no, purely encouraged and <laughs> just like had a, had, had like a imaginary conversation with Satan. I think I just wanted to play like a video game. I think I just wanted to play like, ironically, like Diablo 2 or something. <laughs> and I got it and, I, and, and so he upheld his bargain and um, I think I'm still technically locked into this deal. You seem fine though. I don't know, I, I, I feel like I come off soulless sometimes, <laughs> right guys? <laughs> But I, I blame Greg Daniels for um, this Faustian bargain. That yeah, I, that well, I, it's a you got to pin it on somebody. You might as well pin it on a show. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Did you? Uh, uh, do you have any? You know, I know five months of not doing NSL. Um, are there any sketches you've come up with over the years that you have pitched that you wish had had been received better? Oh yeah. I mean, I, just always, always, always. But the 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 one that I think really really like got away from me was um, Jenna Ortega was here last season and at Monday Pitch I, I pitched her um, this thing where she is um, a children's book author and uh, she writes a book that's kind of like Can You Give a Mouse a Cookie? Can You Give a Mouse a Cookie is a great book. Great book. And it's about how things just get like sort of you give a mouse a cookie and that's just the beginning and of the problem. That's just the beginning yeah. of the problem. And um, I, I pitched her um, a children's book title that she could be the author of called can you give a bitch a break? <laughs> and didn't, didn't take, didn't take. Oh, How well. can that not take? I know, I don't but know. But they lost their minds up there. Exactly. Hey, thanks for being back. Thanks I'm for so happy me, SNL's Seth. back. I'm so happy yeah. you're back in the building. Bo and Yang, SNL premieres Saturday on NBC and Peacock. Dicks the Musical is in select theaters now in Nationwide, October 20th. We'll be right back with Jason Blum.